We are back to the live action. Dave Fair alongside Jesse Sylvia here in Las Vegas. The play is going down at the Gardens Casino in Los Angeles. Three players remain. Field started at almost 600, 584 hopefuls all entered, and we are down to these last three remaining players. Somebody walking out of here with the top prize of $565,000 plus a 2018 Mercedes Benz SLC Roadster valued at 50K plus. $15,000 entry into the season ending WPT Tournament of Champions. Second place, 366. And the next person out, over a quarter million dollars at 270K. Simon on the button is going to raise it on up with his queen jack offsuit. Jake, a couple eights here. This could get interesting. Yeah, I think with his stack size, Jake's just going to jam. Looks like he has a little over 20 bigs. Uh, he elects to put in half of his stack instead. He likes this whole putting in half of his stack thing or whatever. 2.6. Doesn't take long for the rest of the guys to figure it out. Folds back around, and Jake wins the hand. And that's a nice pop for him. He picks up a lot of chess. Yep. So blinds have gone up, 125 and 250, and the ante climbs up as well to 250. So each one of these uh, pots, if you're just playing for blinds, could be a pretty profitable venture if you have the equity to do it. For sure. Uh, basically... There's 625 in the pot before you even start the hand, right? So if you're on the button and you make it even 600,000, which is a reasonably nice size raise, uh, you have to win less than 50% of the time to be profitable. Or to be breaking even. You have to win about 50% of the time to be profitable. So that, that leaves a lot of incentive for players to try to steal pots. You bet. Man looks down at 8-7. Offsuit. Just 125 more to go. Again, like you mentioned, to a pot of 625. But he's considering his options here. And he'll just call. Simon, Queen Jack of Hearts. Good looking hand with just three players in. Definitely. I think he's going to put in a raise. Yep. 850 total from Simon. And men gonna ease on out of the way. Yeah, before you look at him, before you look at him, put him on there for us. Thank you, man. I wonder if, if men had made his third limp raise, what Simon would have done. I think Simon might be starting to catch on that the limp raise. Actually, it's been 30 minutes, right? Since those so games, you, so yeah, so they probably they, got they, the they see the uh, the information 30 minutes later. Obviously, it's being broadcast, but it's not broadcast live live. It's 30 minutes later, and that's for gaming regulations. It has to be that way, so minimize any any potential shadiness on anyone's part. And as a result, though, when 30 minutes have passed, you know exactly what's going on because you hopefully have a, a rail that's sitting there watching the broadcast and can give you information. And then if, uh, like you mentioned, if men has a certain style of play, it can, can be caught on to you pretty quickly. Yep. Now, the question is, does men, I'm guessing men is aware that Simon is probably getting the info relayed to him from somebody who's watching at home or whatever. So he's probably not going to be limp raising too many times light in the next hour or so. These adjustments can save you thousands and thousands of dollars in equity. For instance, if he keeps doing it and Simon decides that he is going to keep doing it, Simon will be printing money just jamming over his limp raises. Almost any two cards. So we'll go to a flop here. Jake right now is the best of it with his king high. And the flop with a jack, a 10, and a 3. Jake's still good. I'm just a very accomplished player. I, I play with him actually at the final table of the Borgata WPT. He got pretty screwed to go out in fourth place. He actually got screwed. He should have went out in sixth place after he got, you know, he, he just got coolered really massively. He had four big blinds. He managed to get two pay jumps before 
he got knocked out. And then he made the final table again of, I think, their winter open, and he won that one. So he basically came back to win the next one that he was in. Now he's here. Well, the couple waits for someone. You see it sitting there behind Jake, whose name will go on the side of that thing, and who will, of course, get the entry into the WPT Tournament of Champions. These are all questions that will be answered in not too long. Simon spikes a queen there on the river, so he's got the best of it. Let's see what he chooses to do. Toss a bet out. I can't imagine this doesn't work. Jake just has king high. Really bad king high. No draw. It's interesting. He's he's found these bluffs with uh, hands that might have just checked down. A couple of times, and his timing has been just phenomenal every single time. Really impressive. And Jake lets it go. Simon going to scoop up another nice pot. 2.1 million in total. 750,000 new chips going his direction. Simon with a good look at hand to start here. 250 to go. Pocket tens. He is going to raise it on up. And that'll be the end of it. That was a little unfortunate. Pick up a hand that's strong and not get any action, but. He'll certainly take the blinds and antes whenever he can. Live from the Gardens Casino in Los Angeles, this is the kickoff of season number 17 of the World Poker Tour. Only three players remain. Big money in this one. $565,000 up top, three sixty-six dollars going to second, two seventy, dollars going to the next person out. 550, or excuse me, 584 people in total into this one. 581 of them have found themselves the rail. These are the last three standing, and men looks down at a 10. And something that's good enough for a raise. Nobody, oh, no, sorry. He limped small blind last time. Oh, it is blind versus blind. Okay, so note that he limped last time. So Simon's probably going to give this raise a little bit more credence just because, although the corollary to that is that he limped last time and Simon raised, so maybe he limps all the strong hands. This time you get the limp re-raise in with the strong hand. There's all these little mind games going on. And as far as players go, I wouldn't really want to be playing too many of these leveling war mind game type of things with Simon. He's a very, very smart guy and a really savvy player, so... He's not the first guy you want to be trying to go into a level war with. Generally. And Simon spikes that jack on the flop. So he's got middle pair, and that is good enough to have a commanding lead in this hand. It goes check, check, though, to the turn. It's a four, so men now gets a piece of it. And he's reaching for chips. I, lo I love that check back by Simon, by the way. He can't get three streets, so he might as well check back a hand like this and let his opponent bluff on the turn and river. Um, he even has a spade as backup if you know, the, the board runs out spade, spade, or something like that. So, pretty big fan of that. 600 to go for Simon. He'll just make the call. Just call is great. What's going to be interesting is what happens on the river. The river is 
a seven of hearts. That's an unnecessary piece of good news for Simon, but I'm still, I'm sure he'll still take it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that Simon, or sorry, that river is pretty great for Simon as well. It turns out that men is betting. So Simon would have probably just called this river anyways. But first of all, it makes it much easier to continue to put chips in the pot for Simon. Also, it means that if men had checked the river, Simon's definitely betting now. He's probably betting anyways, but he's definitely betting now, which is good news for him because men might look him up with a four. As yeah. it is, I imagine Simon's going to raise this river. Uh, we will see. Maybe Simon makes a really tight just call. That's certainly... Yep. Yep, just calls. That's a big pot, though. 4.65 million. Jacks and sevens. Easy one there. Oh, hold on. I think something else happened. I think maybe he said all in or something. Oh, did he? I think he must have because he mucked his hand face down and yeah. got the pot. So all right. Either way, he's the, he's the one stacking up chips. The chip leader at 11.4 million in chips. 46 big blinds. Almost half the chips in play. Great hand by and just very surgically, he's had a couple of coolers at this final table, but hasn't let it get to him. Just slowly but surely chipping on up, chipping on up, and finding his spots. And he's picked the right spots for sure. That's the way you want to do it. Simon with his 6-10 of diamonds. He limps. And this is a hand Jake might raise. It's bad enough that he doesn't really care if he gets limp re-raised. And he want yeah, he's going to go for the raise. I like this. So basically the idea is that he wants to raise some of his best hands. So he has to also bluff with some hands. And bluffing with some of his very worst hands Perfect. is generally pretty good because he uh, he doesn't really care if he gets limp re-raised. It's not like he's getting blown off of a hand with pretty good equity. Yeah, if you have jack nine of hearts or a king queen or something like that, it's a lot harder to let it go, but you know. Yeah, yeah. You get jammed on with a three and a, and a deuce. It's like, okay, you got me. And also, if your opponent is just limp holding a lot to you, what sort of hands do you want to see the, like, do you want to check back with because you're they're guaranteed to see the flop. It's going right. to be hands like, it's a lot easier to play post-flop pots with hands like Jack Nine of Hearts, right? Yeah. So if you think your opponent's limb folding a lot, it's nice to raise your really good hands because you want to charge them, and then your really bad hands because they don't really want to play post-flop anyway. Simon's going to pass on the six and the deuce. Jake with a nine, five of diamonds. 125 more to go for him. Do a pot of 625. He'll make the call over to men. Ooh. Men's got a real hand. Yeah, he's queen diamonds. Wow, he checks it. And it's played extremely tight with some of his better hands. It's been. There's a queen in the window. Four, yep. diamonds, Four and a seven as well. One diamond out there. Yeah, and Jake has a uh, backdoor flush draw, back three draw. Yeah, Jake quickly gets out of there. So, 300 is the bet. Men comes over the top. Jake dumps out right away, and we'll move on to the next hand as Men stacks up his chips. I feel like things would be moving at half the speed if it hadn't been uh, if 
we hadn't had the shot clock. Yeah, the action clock really does move things along, right? I mean, it really helps to uh, increase the pace of play, and I think you're exactly right. I mean, from from you know, fans' perspective, it's a you know, commentator's perspective, having it really moves things things along. But at, from a player's perspective, somebody who actually played in this very tournament, you also enjoy it from the other side of things, yes? Yeah, I think it adds a new element that I really like, um, especially in this tournament. They did it right. They give you a lot of time chip. So when you have your really tough decisions, you have plenty of time to think about them. Ten time chips is a lot of time. Yeah. Um, what it does is it keeps people moving along, for instance, pre-flop or on the flop, where sometimes people take a full minute to decide what to do. And there's very, very few times where you really need a minute. And if you do, go ahead and throw in a time chip. Um, but what it does is it creates a lot of odd dynamics with, uh, for instance, let's say somebody always... Um, when they have it, they never use a time chip because they know what they want to do. But when they are bluffing, they might use a time chip because they have to decide if they want to bluff or not. So there's a lot of li weird little timing tells that get thrown in there. I think that adds to the element that I really like. Um, just additionally, managing your time chips when you're playing all day is kind of cool and, and interesting. I, I'm just a big fan of any tournament that has any difference between you know itself and a regular No Limit Hold'em tournament. And uh, I just love adding new elements to I, I like complicated things. I think they're fun. It's often too, you, you get a player at your table who takes way too long on him at almost every decision. And it's, uh, it's like a little bit selfish. It's like you're not getting to play as many hands because they're, for whatever reason, using up all the clock all the time. So. This just kind of keeps those type of players in line. Just balances out the field for everyone. There, yeah. there, there can't be somebody who's sandbagging on one of the, oh, look at this, nice hand for Simon. Very nice hand. Ace-King to start. He's going to raise it up. I mean, I uh, myself played slowly at a final table once, and if the if the clock was in play, you know, I wouldn't have done that. And I think that's important. Man with 10-7 of diamonds says all in. Oh. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is not. Ooh, this I mean, is. I... Simon's going to take a minute, but I doubt. I really doubt he's folding Ace King. I I would bet a lot of money on him not folding Ace King. This is kind of out of left field by men. Yeah, not... it's just the wrong time to make a move, right? I mean, sometimes you can catch your opponent in a spot where even yeah. if it's Ace Jack, you know, you'll push him off of it. But Ace King is going to be hard to get away from for uh, for Simon. What just happened? I mean, did men just, I think he's tired or something? I don't know what this, his MO with these type of hands is going to call. I mean, seven and a half hours in to uh, to play here for for these guys here at this final table, understandably so. They played till late last night to get to the final table also, so. Yeah. I'm I mean, a little surprised Simon's thinking this hard about it, but I mean. This is kind of a testament to how good he is that he wants to consider it because he feels his edge is probably pretty decent and doesn't want to, especially with the chip lead. And he doesn't want to get himself in a spot for this many chips unless he feels like the edge is bigger than the top. I mean, good on him for thinking about it. I, I don't think that he could ever fold this hand. It would just be... There it goes. Yep. And when he, he makes the call. He sees what Ben has. He's going to be thrilled. Like he's never. Yeah. King of Spades. He'd actually, I mean, he obviously. I don't know. That's the last. That, 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 that's how many yeah. I've seen in the tournament last time against Simon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you never know. All right. So, men does have suited connectors. Let's see. As we go to a flop, what happens here? 15.8 million in the center. Here we go. Flop comes eight of hearts. For Simon. Interestingly, men picked up a clutch shot, so he only lost two out. But, I mean, Simon's got to love this flop. Top pair, top kicker. And will need some help on the turn. It's a five clubs. For Simon. Only one more card. Oh, man, Simon looks calm, but right now you are just... Just sweating this river as hard as it can. And to the river we go. Yeah! 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 Eliminated in third place. $270,000.
going his way. And now Simon is an overwhelming chip leader. Yeah, and, and uh, Jake just got a massive page number, by the way. Yeah, so it's almost $100,000. So it goes for from 270 up to 366. And it's all because men just made a move at the right time. To his credit, because Jake has been very patient. He hasn't got himself in trouble. But Jake Chipper has a lot of work to do here, heads up. 19 big blinds to 75 big blinds for Simon. But as far as performance goes at this final table, you actually called it earlier. The, the yeah. two that you expected to be heads up are now heads up. Yeah, I mean, when they got three-handed and Jake was pretty short, or once they got short, I didn't expect it. Yeah, I, I, these are two very, very strong players. And, and, and the fact that I'm saying two very strong players uh, when I'm mentioning these guys is like almost a testament to each of them because the other one is so good. Uh, they just, I don't know, I, I think the world both their games, so... As yeah. you see it broken down into percentages there, Simon with 80% of the chips in play. Now, and heads up, as we all know, it can change very quickly, but that is going to be a uh, tough mountain to climb for anyone against somebody like Simon. Yeah. Uh, Jake has got to feel like he's a favorite coming in. I know he's a very, very strong heads up player. I don't know how much experience Simon has. Maybe he has a lot, but it's very difficult to better it than Jake. There's not that many players that are. Um, so, that said, I mean, Simon Stolz is a favorite coming in with his chip lead. Dick, Dick's always feeling confident, though. I think he's heads up with anyone. He's just a super good heads up player. That said, they're pretty short, so there's not a there's not going to be a ton of discrepancy between their play. Yeah, you mentioned the big pay jump that Jake just got by men going out in third at 270,000. 366 is who uh, is what the run runner up get. But then all the way up top, almost a $200,000 difference in that total win, coming in at 565000 the 2018 Mercedes-Benz SLC Roadster, a $15,000 entry into the end of this season, which is just starting now for the World Poker Tour. $15,000 entry into the Tournament of Champions. First hand heads up. We get a four, a deuce, and a six. Simon with a gut shot there. Pretty good fun, Simon. All things considered, I think I still hear men. <laughs> that would not surprise. Me. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if he went and got a beer and actually just joined the rail. Yeah, right. Yeah. I fought the rail. <laughs> there has been some John going on. Jake bets a uh, quarter million in chips. Simon with a call. Simon with a queen there on the turn. Oh wow! This is this is the type of board that I up on a lot. Uh, just. Simon's likely to raise him off her turn when he has a strong hand, like two pair, and queen on the Oof. turn. Ooh, wow. So a check, check, and then another queen rolls off for Simon. And a check. Whoa. Trying to trap. Doesn't work, but Simon does win the first hand heads up. Very excited, anxious, or something right now. He's, he's, you can almost feel that he feels like he's on the cusp of something. He's, he wants to close it out very, very badly. Seventeen big blinds for Simon. Well, now seventy-six. Did I say seventeen? I meant to say seventy-seven. It's getting late. Seventy-six big blinds for Simon. Fifteen for Jake. After the chips are put into the center here, six hundred twenty-five k in the center. Jake with an ace and a jack. Good-looking hand. Heads up. Simon simultaneously has a king and a seven of clubs, which is a pretty nice offering with just two in the hand. Yeah, and 15 big blinds deep, I actually would have expected Simon to just shove here himself. It's certainly a hand that's profitable as a shove, especially with these huge antes. And it just, it's easier to play. Like, if you limp and your opponent shoves, you're in a much more spot. Whereas if you... Jake, going all in. Yeah, see, now Simon, he can call, but 
it's a lot closer, and I think it's more profitable to just jam than to limp and then call. I think he might be realizing now he could have just jammed himself. And so he'll step out of the way, and Jake will get the win on that one. Yeah, and you can make the argument, you know, if you're playing against the player you're much better at heads up then, you want to keep your, your volatility really low, and you want to play some smaller pots, and, and you don't think they're going to raise that much. But uh, Jake's such a good player that you, you kind of just have to accept volatility. You can't be giving up any of these edges. And uh, that was a decent edge shoving. Seven two, so. I don't. I don't expect Simon to do much more like that, though. He's he's just too good of a player to even give up a small edge to another player. <laughs> I know there's a chance to go wire to wire. Oh, he. I guess he gave up the chip lead to men for a second. Yeah, but he's always been right there in contention. Like yeah, there, yeah. There, there was a couple of hands where men, you know, I did have the chip lead, but it wasn't by a big discrepancy. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, here we go again, Jake. All in, and I don't think that he's going to get the call out of Simon with the seven deuce, and so we'll move on to the next hand. Uh, worst hand in poker is not a great fit for a call, I suppose. Probably not. So, 74 and 20, big blinds, respectively, for Simon and Jake. Yeah, he's been grinding away here at this final table for over seven hours. Simon with King Seven. 125 more to go. Across the table, his opponent Jake has Jack Eight. Both players have played extremely well this entire final table. Yep. Very deserving of making it to the heads up portion. I can't, off the top of my head, at least think of any significant mistakes either one of these guys have made yet. No, these are two guys that you're not really ever going to see too many significant mistakes from. If anything, you'll catch some small mistakes or maybe one of them misses an adjustment to a player type that they could have made. But, yeah, it, the big mistakes, just it's so rare for players of this caliber. And that makes sense why they dominate tournaments. Seven of diamonds. If you want to do well in tournaments, you can't make big problems ever. Simon with the seven there on that flop, so he'll take a commanding lead. His king seven offsuit. Jake checks to him. Simon reaching for chips. Going to make a bet. 500k to go. Pot nearing 2 million. It would be super awkward if Jake happened to be here. Having second pair. You just feel like your opponent has a queen a lot. He has some draws as well, but. Take reach for the chips. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a balk from him yeah. really ever, but yeah, he just, okay. I think he was thinking, uh, it's a good hand to float. It's called flop, and then if your opponent checks back on the turn, go for it on the river. Uh, specifically because you have two overs to second pair and you have a heart so let, let's say like a heart comes off now with a very good hand, candidate to bluff with on the river it had some backdoor equity whatever but I think Jake just felt like he has some king highs with some ace highs he'd rather float with and turn into bluffs anyways so Simon now almost 5x the chips of his opponent Jake $565,000 sits at the top a couple weights for one of these guys this is the opener of season 17 of the World Poker Tour. Dave Fair and just Sylvia with you as we bring this final table to a close. Jake looks down at his king deuce of clubs across the table. Simon pocket sixes. Simon just announces all in, gets a quick fold from his opponent. I like that. There's really nothing else you can do there. Do you really want to play the sixes post flop? No, and, and also you just, if you have a pair at this stack size, it's just the easiest shove in the world. Yeah. Um, even if your opponent was limping a very tight range, which Jake is not from the small blind, he would still have an easy jam. So.
you look at if you start doing some math and you look at what hands you can shove 15 big blinds you start to realize there's a lot a lot more hands you're allowed to shove profitably than you think things like you know 10 six suited are actually profitable especially with this big ante in here or uh, nine five suit a lot of players might not think that now you can also lip those hands obviously but they're, they're very simple to shove with as well if you're looking for shove bold strategy what about 10 four offsuit this i might check yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is about about as bad as it gets it would be interesting if jake goes for a smaller raise because again, this is the sort of hand that. Uh, you just check. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the sort of hand that doesn't mind getting blown off of its equity, and it's sometimes you will have a really strong hand. Hey, look at that! How about two pair? Wow. And then a nine for Simon. This is bad for Simon. This is really bad. Jake only has 13 pegs, so they could easily get it in. Uh, check, check. Wow. Yeah. Fortunately for Simon, he. Checked it back, which is good for second pair. Check, wow. check as well. And to the river, an eight of hearts. Jake's two pair. Ten four. Obviously good. Let's see if he can get some value here. Seven hundred and fifty thousand in this pot. Here comes the bet. Six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. And yeah, it works. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, mm -hmm. this is one of the best hands he's ever been used to the river with. Uh, basically, every king would shove three. Maybe he limps a little bit of king three, king four, whatever. Uh, but it's very hard for him to have a king, and a ten would bet the flop. So, and nine is like the nuts for Simon's range there. And it's it's a very mandatory call. Jake could certainly be bluffing. The Gardens Casino in Los Angeles is now an official WPT tournament room. This year down there for the start of this tournament and great reviews. So they got the temperature right. Great casino, man. Yeah. I had a, I had a really good time. And Jake going all in with his A6 off. That'll push Simon off that hand. small win there for Jake. Now, normally when you play heads up and there's two small antis in there, uh, you're winning about, you're profiting about, you know, one point, one, one, two big blinds. But with this big blind ante in there, you're profiting two. So you can actually jam even more hands than you could normally jam in these situations. This big ante really changes up how aggressive and, and loose you have to be heads up. It's very interesting. A lot of diamonds out there. Eight three for Simon, five six for Jake. Wow, Simon's going for a raising strategy even this shallow. I don't know if Jake's the exact player you want to employ this type of strategy against, but with so much money out there, I can't imagine it's ever incorrect or too incorrect to do so. Let's see what happens on this flop. Could be interesting. The problem is that Jake won't be holding for uh, race very often because of the price he's getting. There's so. a three, there's a four, there's a six. Quite the puff. Yeah, six. So top pair for Jake. Jake's probably just going to check jam if, if it gets bet, but yeah, Simon checked back again. Very good check. It's a nice bluff catcher, and he's not really getting enough value. Jake, along with his top pair, also has an open ender. Queen of Clubs doesn't change anything on the turn. Jake going to continue here. This certainly could have won either way for Jake, but he decides to bet and protect his equity. I like that. And to the river we go. It's a 10 of hearts. Jake has the best of it. 
2.4 million chips in the center. Check from Jake and a check back to Simon. And there you go. Things evening out. This is the most even that we've seen, even though there's still a big swing between the two of them at 68 big blinds and 25. Jake is slowly starting to chip up. Yeah, this is really scary for Simon. It's it's always tough when obviously you want to enter heads up with a massive chip lead like Simon did, but it also puts a lot of additional pressure on you because you feel like you know, it's yours to win, and if you don't even win, if you things made a start to mistake. swing where it's almost even, you feel like you've you've lost a lot of ground. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Where like you you start to feel like you know it's you're screwing up if you're not mm -hmm. if you don't win the tournament, whereas you could just be running bad or whatever. So it, it, it's just another psychological thing to get over. Um, Simon's a very calm, collected guy, so I'm sure he's not too concerned. Ooh, this could be an interesting hand, Simon. Big slick, ace king, Jake. Ace five of clubs. And Jake reaching for chips. Jake's going to raise. That That actually could save him. Uh, because Simon's probably just jam here. Uh, if he had done anything else, if he had limped and then jammed over a raise from Simon, or if he had jammed himself, he would obviously get called by Simon. But if he raises and pulls a Simon's jam, he actually might avoid pretty massive cooler yeah and there it is simon jams all in we'll jake, jake find his way away from this hand it's a tough spot this is actually a pretty strong hand heads up and i i it's real thin to call but i could see jake making this call he only has one time extension chip the problem for Jake seconds. is that Simon's playing every better ace than ace five in this manner. And while Jake's ahead of some hands, uh, back or whatever, he's not that far ahead of them. He's like a 60 40 favorite, but when he's behind a better ace, it's a three to one dog. This is the final 30 seconds for Jake to make a decision with no more time extensions. If he doesn't make a decision by the time the clock expires, he'll yeah. kill his hand. <laughs> 10 seconds. Could actually affect his decision making. I don't. I, I Jake's the type of player that has so much confidence in the game. Ah. If he's holding out of time, he's not good. So hold, because holding means he's still in the tournament. He, yep. he gets to continue to battle. Um, he'd rather he'd rather make a slight wrong decision, and have more play afterwards than, you know, call off his tournament incorrectly and feel bad about it later. Yeah, and that would have been a devastating call, right? I mean, Ace Five against Ace King would have been. <laughs> Pretty tough one to come back from, and again, Jake makes another correct call. And it, with the pressure on, too. I mean, time extension gone, the last final second, but he had to make a decision there, and again, he does it right. That was pretty remarkable as well that Jake get in. I mean, he took the one line where he doesn't get it all in pre, because if he limps, he most likely limp jams. Yep. He could limp call, but he most likely limp jams. And if he jams, he obviously gets called. Like, that was the only way that he doesn't get cooler. Yep, he called it. That raise saved him. Raise here from Simon up to 600K, and Jake is going to make the call. Yeah, and if, if Jake thinks that Simon's basic too much, he could actually just jam this hand with his stack size very easily, but he elects to just call, which is obviously completely fine. And the flop, oh boy, this could get interesting. So a jack, a seven, and a deuce on the flop. Both players hitting top pair. Oh man, this is, this is, this is going, man. They're just too short. Check, and then. Yeah, this is going in. A bet from Simon of 500. There's a possibility that Jake finds a call here, but even if he does, most turn cards are going to mean that Jake has to put it all in. Yeah, and he just goes for the raise now. Raise up to 1.5. That leaves Jake with 13 big blinds behind. 3.45 million in the middle. 
Now, when he makes a smaller raise, it, I think Simon is a little more concerned about being beat. But the stack size, I can't imagine Simon does anything but get it in. Yeah, it's yep. just, his hands are too good. All in and a call. This could be it. Jake's tournament life is on the line, and he only has three out right now. He's going to need a day. Season 17 of the World Poker Tour kicking off in dramatic fashion. Will it all end right here? It's a three of... I don't know. It's freaking six, impressive. Yeah. Two sides. Right here, baby. There's a champ. Congratulations to Simon Lamb taking it down as season number 17 of the World Poker Tour. It's kicked off in a great fashion. Be fair alongside Jesse Silver for this broadcast of the World Poker Tour.